melting away, there is new and dramatic evidence. The world is heating up fast and we have ourselves to blame. Global warming is real and we humans are almost certainly the cause. That we are living climate change in real time. C News is taking an in-depth look at the problem of global warming. and Global warming is happening, is underway. There is new information that reveals just how fast the world's ice sheets are melting. Melting ice and rising seas at record levels. I just really loved skiing ever since I was a little kid. Um, I've been skiing my entire life. And once I found out that climate change is impacting the ski industry, I really wanted to do something about it and I wanted to figure out why and what is impacting and how is it being impacted. Changing snow and changing glaciers are part of the same story. They're both a reflection of how climate change is altering our world and the ski industry could wind up being affected by climate change more than almost any industry in the United States. We've been hearing about climate change all over the world and there has never really been any stories or documentaries or any of that sort of how it's impacting the ski industry. And I really just wanted to get to the bottom of it and get to know the people who are behind this and who care. It's a $12 billion industry in Colorado alone with thousands of jobs and those are all at stake. The ski industry is certainly wise to be concerned about climate change. And there are at least a couple of organizations. One of them is called POW, P-O-W, Protect Our Winters, as one example of people who are very concerned that they will lose the ability to go out and, and snow in winter in, in some places that may happen indeed. The Sochi Olympics suffered some of the most extreme weather of any winter games. Athletes faced fog, rain, and temperatures in the 60s. Research predicts that could become the new reality at ski resorts around the world. Porter Fox loves to ski. He's been shussing down slopes since he was two. Fox predicts that by the end of the century, ski trips in the state could be little more than a fond memory. Many popular resorts have been implementing green policy efforts to help prevent such a thing from happening. We're really trying to do things. We're trying to reduce our carbon footprint. If we don't lead by example on this, if the ski industry, if A. Basin doesn't do that, I'm not sure who is. Fox also stresses that the impact of a snowless winter, while bad for Utah skiing, is much further reaching. Park City in 20, 30, 40 years might have zero snowpack. We as skiers are going to be affected first. We're going to be affected first because this, that snow is very sensitive to slight changes in temperature. We're going to lose our, our fall snow. We're going to lose our spring snow cover earlier. And we're going to have lower accumulation during the winter. Well, of course, the ski industry is worried about climate change. It's, uh, you know, it's a real thing. And as we all know, the uh, winters are uh, getting warmer. Well, 2016 is the warmest calendar year on record. When you look around the planet, there are, are a lot of worrying trends associated with that. Uh, and so we're seeing this in other places around the world. Greater risk of wildfire, heat waves, uh, big consequences for not just people and society, but also for the environment, big costs uh, associated with these kind of events. Without snow's contribution to the climate and water supply, a chain of disasters including forest fires, dried up rivers, and a loss of hydroelectric power could be set off. Fires, their behavior depend on the terrain and what their fuel is and how they burn. The more fuel we have, the more fires we'll have. Uh, I think the owners of the ski industries are especially worried because they won't be making as much money as they want to, and then they'll have to shut down their resorts. Also think that skiers and snowboarders are worried because if they like snowboarding or skiing as much as I do, they wouldn't want that to go away. I just really love skiing. That's one of the main reasons I live in Colorado and I live in this area of the U.S. is just because I can't live without snow and skiing is just one of my passions.
The snow sports industry nationwide is a $66 billion industry and employs almost a million people, so it has huge economic impact. One of the keys for the ski industry is to capture Thanksgiving as a skiing holiday. And 20 years ago, November, late November was dependable in terms of being cold enough and snowy enough that resorts could open and skiing was good. For instance, last year in November, we had a drought month, but the resort's still open around Thanksgiving. That's what people expect. It was tough to get all the snowmaking done and open up, and they did it. And what we found is that there is a pretty big impact. And when you have a lower than average snowfall winter, you've got about $800 million of unrealized revenue in the United States. And it can cost the US about anywhere between 13,000 and 27,000 jobs. Well, I, I think all resorts should worry about the, the, the effect of climate change. I mean, snowmaking when I was skiing was almost non-existent. Unbelievably warm conditions. Snowmaking is becoming more difficult. And in our industry, these are crucial things. You know, we need, we need cold air. We need winter. We need snow. But with the advent of, of snowmaking, and especially in, in recent years, the technology about making snow, it used to be you couldn't make snow below freezing but now they can actually make snow above freezing. And we can get snow up to about 37 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. And so with climate change, we're warming the planet. What that does in the winter time is it pushes us toward somewhat warmer conditions. One of the things that's happening as the, as the planet has warmed up is we've been getting about the same amount of water, but more of it falls as rain and less as snow. And obviously that's a problem for the ski industry. We don't ski on water, we ski on snow. Half of the 103 resorts in the Northeast will likely not be able to stay open, and that's in the next 30 years. It's the lower places that are getting hit the worst, as you might imagine. Because warming also turns the, the precipitation to rain, at the beginning and the end of the season, the, the snow season gets a little bit shorter. The snow pack tends to be larger in the middle of winter and up till about February, but from March uh, through the rest of the year, the snow pack is now less than it used to be. You know, I've been up in Big Bear since the you know early 80s, and there was plenty of years where we were skiing all the way till May 1st, and we were having winter storms through April. You know, in fact, April and March used to be our coldest, snowiest, wettest month of the years, and it's not that way anymore. Once I began to really look into this subject, I discovered that there was actually a climate change panel focusing on skiing and how climate change is affecting the ski industry. And I went up to find out more about the future of snow. So we're here today because uh, A Basin is sponsoring a panel of three people who are gonna be talking about climate change and in particular, the impact of climate change on the ski industry. Well, as we near the end of ski season up in the high country, climatologists have some bad news. Why they say the season will continue to end earlier and earlier each year, and how the changing climate might change the way we hit the slopes. Shrinking ski season is something that has been going on here in Colorado. It's quite well documented. Uh, and this is uh, um, quite attributable to a warming planet, which is attributable to uh, human activities that have uh, impacted our climate system. And so this is the burning of fossil fuels, putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And there are a number of other pollutants and greenhouse gases. Our models predict that with increasing greenhouse gas emissions, we'll see warming of uh, approximately four degrees Celsius. And that's a, that's a global average. Now there is a critical number that's being discussed at the Climate Change Summit. That number is two degrees, two degrees Celsius. Now if the global average temperature rises by that number, we're in our uncharted territory. It means things like supercharging droughts, storms becoming more intense, heat waves becoming more deadly. You know, people say a degree or two, oh, that'd be great. I'd love it to be a degree or two or three warmer. You know, I could grow my tomatoes in February. If you go four degrees is about how much warmer the planet was 40 million years ago when it was warm enough that Antarctica was completely melted. Small changes in temperature have big impacts on this planet. So when, we, when scientists talk about two degrees, we are very nervous about two degrees. And when we talk about four degrees, we're talking about as much change as this planet has seen in 40 million years. So even two degrees difference can make a tremendous amount of difference. What that means for 
ski areas could mean, mean the difference between rainfall and snow. So if we add lots of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, and we have, there will be more energy in the atmosphere. Energy in the atmosphere is by definition climate, and climate will change. This is the projection for Western North America. I'm a little emotional. <laughs> I found myself getting a little emotional talking about the projected changes. The, the emotions kind of rise to the surface when, when I then have to communicate the, the dire situation that we could potentially be in if we continue along uh, the current greenhouse gas emissions uh, trajectories. I think the emotion comes from he knows it's coming, he's trying to get the word out, and nobody's believing him. This past Thanksgiving was a pretty bad um, time for skiing. Now, it got better right after that, but uh, when you miss that important holiday, you're missing a lot of skiers. Yeah, I think what we're seeing with weather is very unpredictable. I mean, I think it would be a hard time to be a meteorologist right now. Well, it gets tougher and tougher all the time because of so many other factors that are playing in and so many of factors that we're aware of. But changes are happening, which do change your forecasts and change the state of the weather around the globe. The difference between weather and climate is basically one of time. Weather is short term. What's gonna happen over the next week, months, that sort of thing. Uh, climate is what happens over a longer duration. So that's what is changing. That's what we're watching change. So I'm a climate scientist. One of the key words there is that I'm a scientist. And so it's like being a detective. But in addition, being a climate scientist, it means that what I do is actually important for society. It's important for the environment in general. Skiing is, um, unfortunately, at the mercy of weather, at the mercy of climate. If it doesn't get cold enough, we don't ski. And if we don't get snow, we don't ski. Um, this is, you know, that's the, <laughs> that's the reality of a sport, an industry, a pastime, which is very intimately connected to climate. And as climate changes, the industry changes along with it. It has to. The, the planet is changing, and it's changing in ways that if it continues for another 40 years, can have really major consequences for society and for the environment. I always want to have skiing in my life, and I want to know that my kids can have skiing in their life as well and enjoy the delicacy of snow and how beautiful, just the special feeling of being able to ride and ski through powder waist deep is an unbelievable feeling. If my kids aren't able to do that, or even just my friends or family, even just people around the world, if they aren't able to experience the nature and the pureness of snow, that would be extremely heartbreaking. If the ski industry were to shut down, it would affect my life and millions of other people's lives very drastically. Recognizing that climate change is happening is the first step, but then planning for it sensibly is another thing that we can do. The really exciting part about climate change right now is that the technology to solve the problem largely exists. We have the right renewable technology and really what we need to do is just implement those policies. We absolutely have a fighting chance to change some of these policies. So really all we need to do is transition off of some of these bad policies in terms of fossil fuels and move towards that clean energy and we'll be able to protect some of this powder. Speaking out is how things can change. And so I think that's something that skiers and riders can do. Well, we can, uh, we can talk. Uh, we can let our friends and neighbors know. We can let people know that, that indeed, we have seen change uh, in the skiing, and we have seen change in the quality of skiing. And um, let people know about that. And let people know that this is, a, this is a big business. It's important to Colorado's economy. It's $12 billion a year uh, for the state, and that's important. Major changes could be in store for us, and so it's really worrying about what we, what kind of a planet we're leaving our children and our grandchildren, the, the future generations. I think that's my goal with my child is teaching her how to be a responsible citizen while loving and respecting the earth and really enjoying our passion and trying to cut our carbon footprint the best we can and teaching our children how to cut your carbon footprint but while also having a love and passion for the outdoors. I believe we have an opportunity right now. We are nearly on the edge of a crisis but we still have an opportunity to face the greatest challenge of our generation, in fact, of our century. I'm only 18 and I still have so many more years left to ski and I just can't imagine not being able to do that.